So at the time of making this review, I've been playing with the Model O2 wireless for a little over a month now, and as someone who never used the original Model O, I was really excited to try this one out. It's been fun to use, don't get me wrong, but there's a few glaring issues that make it really hard to recommend to most of you. It has an updated design that I personally think looks pretty good. The branding is a lot more minimal than Glorious's past mice, opting only for a small Odin logo underneath the DPI button and some text on the side. There are still the perforated holes at the back and bottom side, but I think people still make too much of a big deal about them. When you're actually playing, they're going to be covered, and these circular cutouts look better in my opinion compared to the honeycomb ones. I almost always go with the white versions of mice, mostly because I just think they tend to look cleaner, and it's definitely the same here. The gray accents complement the mouse nicely, and the whole thing itself really pops on the black mouse pad. One of the first things I noticed when I finally got the mouse in hand was the coating. It's very similar to the Viper V2 Pros, which I liked a lot, and then it's very grippy. This for me just makes playing a lot more comfortable, and I never feel like it's slipping around. Resting my fingers on the mouse buttons is pretty comfortable, and the new switches in here make for a crisp, satisfying click. These are a collaboration with Cal, and I really have no complaints with them. I still prefer Razer's optical switches over these any day of the week, but I've enjoyed them in-game and throughout Windows. Different from the original model though, the two mouse buttons are separate pieces of plastic, which I found to provide a very consistent click. They do wobble a little bit, but I didn't even notice this until Random Frank P pointed it out, so I wouldn't worry about it. I like to use a sort of hybrid grip style with claw and fingertip, and I found it to work really well for these mouse buttons. Though with just how short the mouse is, I have found it a little uncomfortable to try to have a proper fingertip grip. It measures in at 126mm long, 38mm tall at the back, 32mm tall in the front, 60 millimeters wide at the center, and then 61 millimeters and 66 millimeters wide at the front and back, respectively. This is going to be a similar shape and size to something like the Viper, so it's a pretty safe pick in that sense if you have a claw or palm grip. The mouse is marketed at 68 grams, but on my scale it comes in at like 69, 70 grams. This is by no means heavy and can still be considered lightweight, but when you have so many other on the market that are much lighter with this, even without the perforated holes, and if you care about that, it can be a reason to stray away from this mouse. Glorious is capable of making lighter mice. The Model D Pro that I just got in is 60 grams, and their Model O Pro was 55. Now comparing to the last generation, this 68 gram weight is a negligible difference from the 69 gram Model O. Me personally, I don't really care that much about the weight. You know, having a 50 gram mouse doesn't do much for me because once I'm in the flow of gaming, the weight isn't the thing that I'm really paying attention to at all. It's more, is the mouse comfortable? Is it gliding well? And I think most importantly, do the mouse buttons themselves feel nice to click on? With that aside, the mouse does have a really nice build to it, and I only have found there to be a little bit of creaking. But I've been pretty disappointed with these side buttons, to be honest. They're a little small, so they've been hard for me to hit quickly. They do feel a little mushy, and just don't have the same feedback as I liked with the Model D and the Viper. The scroll wheel isn't bad, it has very pronounced steps, and doesn't produce any rattle. I like the rubbery texture it has, and the solid color without lighting, in my opinion, looks much better. Right behind the scroll wheel is the DPI button as expected, and the LED to see which of the six stages you're on is on the underside. With the new Banff 2.0 sensor, you're able to go up to a 26,000 DPI with an increased 650 IPS tracking speed. You're going to have the same 1000Hz pulling rate, which still makes your mouse movements feel very responsive. The Banff sensor with the stock feet make for a smooth gaming experience. Mouse feet, in my opinion, make a much greater and noticeable difference as far as gaming performance goes than any sensor, so Glorious did a pretty good job here. The Model O2 can get up to 210 hours of battery life over Bluetooth, or 110 hours with the USB dongle. There is still two light strips on both sides, but enabling the lighting will have a severe hit on the battery life. During the first week of testing the mouse, I used a solid color at 60% brightness, and I was having to charge every two days. Since turning that off completely, I've charged it maybe once, and I haven't had any issues. And I honestly think it looks cleaner without them anyways. If you do want to configure the lighting, you're going to need to use Glorious Core, but what I've found is that with this mouse and the Model D is that the colors are extremely inaccurate. It can barely even do white correctly, I've found that to look the 
most natural around 70%, but every other color, if you're not at 100% brightness, is extremely washed out. Even then, the majority of the color spectrum isn't even hit. I tried having more of a gold color, but the best it can do is bright yellow. So I've enjoyed using the Model 2 to game, but at its $99 price tag, it's hard to really justify the purchase. It's not a bad mouse, but it's not offering anything super unique, the weight isn't very competitive, and this shape is similar to a lot of other mice on the market. The perforated holes can definitely be a turnoff, and I know a lot of you do still care about this. You're likely better off getting the original Model O, which you can get for around 70 bucks on Amazon, or looking at the Pulsar X2 at the same price point. Definitely recommend watching the review on that one. The Viper V2 Pro is still my favorite flat shape mouse by far, and if you are willing to shell out another 50 bucks, the optical switches and the 59 gram design are really nice to have. Let me know what you think down below and if there's any other mice you want me to check out because I'm trying to do a sort of top 5 gaming mice right now video and I want to make sure that I have a really good look at the entire market. So to stay up to date with that, make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Otherwise, I appreciate you guys for watching and I'll catch you next time. Take care.